session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am starting with the next topic of transient dynamic problems. Two types of problems are going to be solved in this topic. One is on axial vibration and the other is on transverse vibration. As you know, axial vibration will be along the axis of the body and transverse means the direction which is perpendicular to the axis of the body. So there are two methods used for solving which are mentioned below. The first type is called as consistent mass matrix. While computing this type of mass matrix, the mass of the element is considered to be distributed throughout the element. Which means if I say this is my beam, I will consider that the entire beam is subjected to the mass which is applied on it. There is another method which is called as lumped mass matrix. The complete mass of the element can be distributed equally at two nodes. The mass matrix formed in this way is called as lumped mass matrix. Now if you look at the same beam, you can say that the mass is considered at these two nodes for the beam. Now this beam is an element. So this is node 1. This is my node 2. So this is only one element. Say if I have, then the mass will be equally divided. So this will be m by 2 and this will be m by 2. This is called as lumped mass matrix method. Now, when you are solving a numerical, you can use any one of the two methods. If it is mentioned to solve with a particular method, then you have to use that method. But if it is not mentioned, then you can use any one of the two methods. But I would prefer going for lumped mass matrix over consistent mass matrix. There are certain advantages and hence I would choose that. The lumped mass matrix is a diagonal matrix. Now when I say it's a diagonal matrix, I mean that my diagonal elements will be 1 and rest of the elements will be 0. So there is a term like this in your equation which will make it easier or simpler for me to solve. Also diagonal matrices are formed easily and they can be computed fast. Now since you are computing fast, this is very important, it will save your time in your computer and even if you don't use a very high end computer, you are still going to get the solutions and you get it really fast. So it is better to use lumped mass matrix over consistent mass matrix. Now I will give you a formula list in this lecture so that it becomes easier for you to conceive the formula when you are solving the numerical and get through it easily. We will first talk about EME for actual vibration. Actual vibration is also called as free vibration. Free vibration means there is no external force applied on the body and still the body has some type of vibration. That is because of some internal molecular changes. Say there could be some change in temperature. So the molecules go apart. So there will be some type of vibration in the body. Or maybe there is some internal energy changes because of some movement of the particles. So that is why there can be some vibration in the body. So this is simple free vibration. That is your actual vibration. Now this can be solved by two methods as we have discussed. First we will talk about consistent mass matrix method. So this is the equation which is used. Now this equation is little different from the direct application of EME type of numericals which you have solved. There you had equations on both the sides but you did not have this variable on both the sides. So just look carefully. Here you will have AE upon HE 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 u1 u2 raised to e. Now this is something which you can relate to you have already used before. This is my k. k means stiffness matrix and u is displacement. So this is written in short over here. On the right hand side you will have one load matrix p plus rho a h e omega square upon 6 2 1 1 2 u1 u2 raised to e. Here this p is my load matrix. And here omega square is the frequency of vibration of the body and rest of the terms that you see are a part of mass matrix. So mass matrix here for consistent mass matrix method is rho a h e upon 6 2 1 1 2 and this is displacement matrix which you already know. Now this is the equation and the terms as I just discussed. This is very important for free vibrations. There is no external force. So this term P becomes 0. Once this becomes 0, only this much portion of the equation remains. So this is my shortened form of equation for consistent mass matrix for actual vibration. Next we will go for lumped mass matrix method. Here the equation is 
A E upon H E one minus one minus one one U one U two raised to E. This is again the same left hand side which we just saw. On the right hand side again P one P two raised to E, which is obviously going to become zero over time. And then you have rho A H E omega square upon two. In the previous method it was upon six. Here you had two one one two. Here in this method you have one zero zero one. So this is the diagonal matrix that I was talking about, and using this matrix makes it very simple to solve. And again, you have u one, u two raised to e. So p is zero. So this is what remains. So this equation is supposed to be used when lumped mass matrix is what is asked for. Next, we'll go for EME for transverse vibration. Now, if this is the axis of the body, transverse means in this direction. So if the axis is along x, so this will be your axial vibration. So the transverse will be along y-axis, perpendicular to your actual direction. So there will be again two methods for consistent mass matrix. This is the equation to be used. Now this is not very difficult. You will only have to look carefully. You have seen this much portion of the equation already. This part we have used when we were talking about truss element and beam element as well. So when I look at this part, I think this is very much simple, and I, you can fill up this portion. If you do not know about these, please go back to the lecture. I'll link it below. Check it and get back. This is very simple to fill up. We will talk about this portion. Here I have rho a h e omega square upon four two zero. So you'll have to remember the number. And this matrix is what you need to remember. In that, again, this matrix is what you can remember: one fifty six minus twenty two h e minus twenty two h e four h e square. Copy this matrix. At this diagonal end, and here you will have to remember fifty four thirteen h e thirteen h e and three h e square. So whatever you write here, just copy it at this end. Now when you talk about the negative sign, again I'll give you a trick for remembering the negative sign. Here the negative sign is two two. You can just remember this way. Here it was one one. If you recollect, one one means first row, first column. When I was talking about first row, you see all the terms are taking negative sign, and also the column. Since this number took negative sign twice because it is lying in the first column and first row both, this became positive six number. When you talk about this, here you'll have to talk about the second row and second column. So each term of second row will take a negative sign, and also each term of second column. Now since four h e square is lying in the row and column term both. So it has become positive. So this should be good enough to remember the signs. Now here, this is together with this. You have v one, v two, v three, v four raised to e as a common term. Previously, you were using u one, u two. So here it is just v one, v two, and is equal to q one, q two, q three, q four raised to e. Now here, what do they stand for? We'll look, and we know this already. V one three five. Will indicate deflection two four six odd number and even number. If you recollect, this is again the concept of truss and beams. There also we have used the same concept, only that we were using a W term over here for indicating deflection and slope. So here we are using V. So one three five it indicates deflection at nodes one two three, and V two V four V six. These are indicating slope at node. One, two, three, respectively. When I talk about Q, one, three, five, the odd numbers for Q will indicate shear force, and two, four, six will indicate bending moment. They are for node one, two, three, respectively. Then we'll talk about lumped mass matrix. Here we have this matrix the same. I think I will not repeat this portion. If you look carefully, this is the reason why I was telling you lumped mass is better because. If you see, it is half zero zero one by seventy eight h e square, and this entire thing is copied here. This in itself is a diagonal matrix containing terms in the diagonal and zero here. Copy this at this end, and since this entire thing is also diagonal matrix, diagonal has terms. These will be zero. So it's very easy to remember, and these two are again similar to the ones which I just discussed. V one, V two, V three, V four raised to E is equal to Q one, Q two, Q three, Q four raised to E. They indicate the same thing which we just spoke about in consistent mass matrix. Now this is about solving by FCA method. There is also an exact method for calculating the frequencies. 
that is W i is equal to i pi upon 2 l into root of e upon rho. This formula derivation you must have already studied in your physics 12 standard. This is a derivation for calculating the exact frequency. Uh, I think there you have studied for calculation of exact frequency of tongs, for pair of tongs. Here you are calculating for the beam. Now I will indicate the iteration for us that is 1, 3, 5 up to infinity. So you just have to place the value of i, pi is to be substituted in the calculator. L will be given to you always, the length of the beam. E is the Young's modulus of the beam and rho is the density of the material which is used for the beam. So these are the formulas that we are going to use for solving of the numericals of this chapter. With this I end the session. In the next session we will discuss about the numericals of this topic. See you in the next session. Thank you.